In this next video, we'll talk about discrete output devices. In uh, 2.1, we're we'll talking about discrete input devices, and now we'll look at the outputs. So again, the inputs are what's being sensed from the uh, from the plant floor, and the outputs will be the things that we will turn on or off to control the process or provide indications as to what's going on with the process. So we look at again. So we're still talking about discrete devices, so things that will be on or off and no in-between states. So our typical discrete output devices that uh, we can encounter will be things like pilot lights. Those are basically um, indicator lights. The relays, time delay relays, contactors, solenoids, solenoid valves, heaters, and horns. And we'll look at each one of those in a little more detail. And just like in our inputs, uh, the control voltages for these discrete output devices are also going to be either 120 volt AC or 24 volt DC typically. I do list 240 volt AC and 125 volt DC. Um, those, those are things you could encounter, but they're usually very special cases. Um, but again, a majority, I'd say 90 uh, plus percent of what you will encounter is usually going to be 120 volt AC or 24 volt DC as your control voltage inside your cabinet. Um, it doesn't have to be where if your inputs are 24 volt DC, your outputs must be 24 volt DC. Uh, it, you could find circumstances where, uh, you know, your control voltage for your outputs is different than your control voltage for your inputs. Um, you know, there's really no rule of thumb there. Traditionally, usually the inputs and outputs kind of match typically, but it doesn't have to be that way. Once again, it all depends on what it is you're controlling uh, and what uh, control voltages you might have present uh, or might be required. For instance, there are some, maybe some output devices that might only be available at 24 volt DC, and you might have 120 volt AC running as your uh, control power for your, all your inputs. So you would have to have a special uh, power supply maybe just for that one output because it's, it's a bit of a special case scenario. So those things will always happen. So let's just look at the uh, the different devices and the symbols. Once again, the, the, you know, there's our, you know, there's uh, symbols that are from that ISA, ANSI ISA standard. So we, we like to try to use these uh, standard symbols as much as possible. So pilot lights, again, are simple uh, illuminated uh, indicators, basically. So it's a light bulb. Um, you can uh, get different color lenses or different color light bulbs or LEDs nowadays, perhaps. Um, but it, then you, if you need to, you, you put a different color lens on the outside when you purchase it. So typical colors will be, you know, red, green, yellow or amber, blue, white. Um, so usually it's colors that are, you know, easy to, you know, easy to distinguish. Um, red and green are, are usually very universal in their meanings. You know, red usually is a indicator of something's bad. Green is usually an indicator of something's good. Um, you know, green could also mean that it's running. Red could mean that it's off. So there are different, uh, it could be different standards of what the colors mean, uh, but traditionally green is good, red is bad, and yellow is typically a warning of some sort, um, perhaps. So uh, just like us, universal, you know, stoplights, red, yellow, green, you know, green is good, go, red is bad, stop, and yellow is proceed with caution, <laughs> not speed up, um, as most people do. The, uh, the symbol for a... Uh, uh, a pilot light uh, is simply a circle and with like a kind of like a you know light rays coming off of it so it looks like a light bulb and a lot of times you will put the the letter in the middle to indicate the color so r for red um, up here pl just stands for pilot light but it, you would typically want to define the color at this point so you know that it's either red you put a g for green uh, a for amber or y for yellow perhaps uh, right, so uh, B for blue, W for white, etc. Relays. So relays are uh, like a really, really uh, useful 
and we'll call this typically what we'll call a relay is a is an interposing device because what happens with a relay is that the plc output will energize the relay coil and when we energize the relay coil it'll actually change contact states right so a relay is basically a um uh, it's basically a, a like a, a switch that we can control um automatically right so before the switch was a manual process we had to actually turn the switch here when we energize this coil inside there's a coil inside the relay basically you can see here it says dc 24 volts so that's actually a coil of wire when we put 24 volt dc on this coil it actually turns it into an electromagnet and then when we uh when the electromagnet when the electromagnet um you know becomes magnetized it'll actually pull this contact towards it just through using the properties of, of magnetism so here the coil is off this contact is uh is you know normally closed but when we turn on this coil it's going to pull this contact over right and it'll open up this contact and now allow power to pass through this contact same thing here uh, just just a single contact versus this uh this kind of two this uh double throw they call this they call it a single pole because it's only one pole it's one one blade but in this case it's a single throw meaning that you know there's no connection here it's only connected here but we have two connections here so we call this a double throw uh, so we have some some terminology you could potentially see out there so things like spst for single pole single throw relay or an spdt for a single pole double throw and of course we have the potential to have more than one pole we can have two poles so here we have two separate blades these are isolated from each other so this this blade is not electrically connected to this blade uh, they're only mechanically coupled because when this relay coil energizes then both blades will will change their state but these are completely electrically isolated so we would call this a double pole double throw relay another um Another look at what this, you know, what the relay looks like, you know, from a kind of a sideway cutaway view, there's our electromagnet or our coil, right? So the coil will actually be what we turn on from the uh, PLC. So that would be the output from the PLC we will energize this coil. But then, you know, we have this, uh, this arm and the contacts and it is spring loaded so that when this does actually, you know, become unmagnetized or demagnetized, I should say, you know the spring will help pull it back to its uh off state shall we say so when it's magnetized it's just pulled down and held in and we have a path out this path you know from you know common in through this arm now it you know it comes out here when the coil is off then our path is up throughout this contact all right the uh uh should say this electrical the symbol to use on a schematic is simply a circle. So uh, if you see the circle, that's a coil. Anytime you see a circle, you can pretty much assume that's a coil of some sort. Uh, could be a relay, could be a contactor, um, but uh, that's that's the symbol. Uh, this diagram is just to help you know that there's different terminologies. So we've been using, you know, um, uh, you, you know, some cases we saw that there was, you know, kind of two um throws as they call it or two 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 output potentials um you know one was normally closed and it switched over to normally open um so there are actually we kind of simplify the terminology there with using this form a b and c contact so just important to know that you could see this terminology um as you get into some control uh you know schematics or some specifications or or whatnot you might see someone say i want to form c contact or i might want to form a contact so there's actually a lot more forms out there um, but typically it's going to be form a b or c and the difference is a form a is basically a normally open contact a form b would be just a single normally closed contact and a form C is the t situation where we have, you know, normally closed on this way and normally open this way. So we have the, you know, common coming in and we have, you know, two output paths. 
basically that's what this is. This is a form C contact, right? So, so when the coil is off, we have a path out this one. When the coil is on, our path now goes out this one. So um, that's a, we call that a form C contact. Another type of discrete relay is a time delay relay. So uh, obviously the previous relay, you know, when we androze the coil, the contact changes state instantly. There's no time delay whatsoever. Um, but there are circumstances where we might need to introduce a time delay. So we don't want to energize or change the state of the contact uh, immediately when we energize the coil. And so we might want to time out a certain period of time and then change the state. Um, examples of that could be um, maybe when we uh, when we push the button, you know, we want to give like uh, 30 seconds to make sure that all the operators have, you know, stepped away from the machine, right? Maybe the machine's very dangerous to, uh, you know, to humans. And we want to say, okay, the operator has to push the button, but then let's give it like a 30 second delay before we actually start the piece of equipment. We would do that with a time, maybe with a time delay relay, right? So I can take this big knob here and kind of dial in the time setting. Or nowadays we have more uh, kind of electronic versions where I could just kind of use these dip switches and and kind of whatever, you know, pick the combination of the dip switches to get to the right time uh, length that we need. So what happens now is when this, when I push that push button, it might actually, um, you know, it'll turn on the coil inside this, this timer, but it will not change this contact state until the timer has timed out the full 30 seconds. Once it's, uh, once it's, you know, timed out its time, you know, time setting, um, then this contact will change its state. The, uh, the symbol for a time delay relay is the little arrow heads. So if it's an on delay, then you'll see the arrow kind of pointing up. If it's an off delay, then it, the arrow will be pointing down. Now, for purposes of this class, we are going to deal a lot with timers, but the timers will actually be in the program itself. So we're going to spend a lot of time programming on delay and off delay timers that basically do what these mechanical time delays do. But know that they exist as, as, as a you know physical, real time delay relay. Um, but more, more often as the case today with the PLC, we use the PLC to be the timers. Contactors. Contactors are basically the, the same thing as a relay. They are, um, the difference between a relay and a contactor is that the, the contactor is designed to handle a much larger current draw. And typically contactors are used specifically for motors. It can also be used for lighting. You could hear like a lighting contactor, but they're really used in motors because motors require a, a very large amount of current to get the motor started. And then once the motor's running, you know, that current kind of, you know, goes down, that inrush current goes down, but there's still a pretty heavy current required to make a motor run, depending on the size of the motor, of course. So we use a contactor just because those relays we were looking at earlier are probably about a 10 amps max on the contact, you know, what it can handle. Whereas a contactor uh, can handle, um, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus amps, all depending on the size that you purchase. The other difference is, you know, here's the, the actually the, the picture here kind of represents that a relay is usually um, a single contact that just gets thrown. Whereas a contactor has kind of three contacts that all get changed state at the same time. And the reason for that is because the contactor is again usually used for a motor and motors are typically three phase so when we're talking about power systems we have a three phase system in our power systems in our industrial facilities so a b and c phase so when we want to turn a motor on we need to turn all three phases on to the motor at the same exact time so we use a contactor to guarantee that you know all three contacts are are ganged together and they will all close and open at the same time to uh, switch power on or off to the motor. So long story short, 
if we're talking motors, then you're going to use a contactor. If you're talking uh, pretty much any other type of switching, then you'll be using a relay typically uh, in your applications. And another good reason for the contactor and the PLC is because the PLC, you know, this just controls the coil. You know, so the PLC is not going to switch all three contacts at once. It's just going to drive the coil, and that will the, the contactor will take care of all the switching. The other thing is the PLC cannot handle anywhere near the amount of current that it would take for a motor. A PLC output, you know, at the best is two amps on, on special outputs, PLC output types. Typically, they're half an amp. So these little coils don't draw a lot of current. So a half an amp output of a PLC could easily drive this coil. And half an amp output cannot drive this motor whatsoever. Another type of output is a solenoid. So a solenoid is kind of the same thing as a relay with the exception of it doesn't have an electrical contact. Instead, it, it, it uses the electromagnetic principle and it actually will pull in or, or push out this kind of mechanical plunger. So instead of, again, a, a typical relay is a, the coil energizes and a contact changes state and you know some kind of electrical path gets switched on or off, a solenoid is going to be more of a mechanical uh, operation. So I can actually, you know, pull something in or push something out when I energize this coil. So the symbol for a solenoid is this kind of um, sawtooth looking wave here. So we got our terminal in, terminal out, and we have this, you know, kind of, uh, again, sawtooth, uh, sawtooth wave as the symbol for a solenoid. And you can see a uh, little example schematic shown here, but you can see the, the solenoid coil shown right here on the uh, relay logic. Kind of looking at the relay logic, uh, you can see kind of your inputs or your input devices are kind of here on the left and your output devices are here on the right. And that just kind of represents the flow of electricity, right? So we'll, we'll flow power will come down this side. It'll come through here and turn it on, right? So it comes through your input and turns on your output comes through your input, turns on your output. So, um, so this kind of natural looking kind of, you know, inputs to the left and outputs to the right, uh, is just going to be something we will, you'll see quite a lot, especially as we move into, into the PLC programming, the, the PLC programming really mimics what this diagram right here looks like. Another, uh, kind of application of a solenoid would be a solenoid valve. And this would be something probably more common that you would see. Uh, in industry uh, is a solenoid valve. The difference, uh, you know, we talked about control valve in the first video slightly on, on being an, an, an analog type device. The, the solenoid valve is the discrete device, meaning that when I energize a solenoid, it might open the valve. And when I de-energize a solenoid, it'll close the valve. And there will be no in-between state. There'll be no like half open or 75% open it's going to be either full open or full closed. So think of the light bulb, right? The valve is on, the valve is off, or the valve is open, the valve is closed. So um, these will be used a lot, especially in pneumatic and uh, uh, pneumatic systems, like especially like switching air, you know, air pneumatic, um, you know, maybe compressed air lines. You could, you know, switch, you know, switch that, um, you know, airflow on and off with these solenoid valves. Symbol for solenoid valve. This is the valve symbol. The two uh, triangles kind of making a bow tie is your is your valves valve symbol to indicate that it's a solenoid valve. You just kind of put this um, indicator kind of above it and put an S in it, and that tells you that it is a solenoid valve. Um, two more here. So one is heaters. A heater can be a, a can be considered a discrete device if it's a type of heater that is either on or off if there's no control to the amount of heat right um so that plenty of examples of of industrial heaters that are just simply turn on turn it on and it starts heating something and you turn it off and it stops heating something um there's no like again there's no control to the amount of heat like you know for 50 percent heat you know 75 percent whatever um so the symbol for a heater uh, looks like this is like a square, kind of a square wave used, right? Repeating square wave. This is a symbol for a heater. You could see this, but this is more commonly used, the square wave. Um, 
All right, just an example here of a of an immersion heater going inside of a tank. All right, so you, you could use you know this in combination with a temperature switch. All right, so you have a temperature switch probably sitting here somewhere that would tell you that the uh, whatever is in this tank is is gotten to be too cold. We need to heat it up. So when the temperature switch triggers, then we turn on the heater. And when the uh, heat, when the when the liquid in the tank heats up, then we can turn off. You know, the, the temperature switch will detect that, and it can tell it to turn off. And it could sit there and do that all day long, very much like your air conditioner, um, for the most part. And last discrete device of significance is a horn, just like a uh, just like a light. You know, is an indicator. Lights are you know visual indicators. A horn would be an audible indicator. Um, and usually the horn is a type of signal where it's just on or off. And when you turn it on, it just makes this screeching sound. It could, it could vary the pitch, you know, that's just part of the programming of the horn, but it's still a discrete device. You turn it on or you turn it off. Um, a lot of times, you know, visual indicators like a light bulb may not be seen by an operator. If you're not standing by the piece of equipment, you may not see the light, but um, if you have a horn going, uh, you'll hear the horn, right? The horn is audible, maybe in a very much larger area. So if you're not standing by the equipment, you hear the horn, you know that something is uh, something is going wrong. You need to go look at it. Uh, so the symbol for horn is this kind of like a horn a little bit. So so how would this kind of look on a uh, output wiring diagram? This is so just like with the inputs before, we had all the inputs going into the input card. Here we would see the, the outputs kind of coming out of the output card. So a lot of times we would draw our output card now on the left-hand side and we would come out and show our output devices. So this is our discrete output card in the PLC. And once again, we start in with zero. So zero through seven, this would be an eight point card. And we basically come out of the card. We're going to go to the um, to the device. So this says a heater, but this is not drawn as a heater. This is drawn as a relay. So this tells me that there's probably a, a interposing relay that when the PLC will turn on this relay coil, this relay in turn will turn on a heater. Um, and here's H2. We have a solenoid valve, right? So feed valve, solenoid one, solenoid two, apparently. Uh, we have pump starters. So in this case, uh, again, it's a circle. So it's we know it's a coil. And being it says pump starter, that kind of implies that it's probably a contactor because we're starting a pump. And a pump is usually tethered to a motor to make a turn. So we can kind of imply this is probably contactors. And once again, two more starters here for the mixers. So even though they're, they're coils, but these would probably be contactors for again, to turn on the motor that will turn on mixer one and the motor, it turns on mixer two. And that's it for control output devices. Um, we'll uh, pick this up in a, in a, uh, in our next video.